Hi everybody, Jonathan here, and today we're going to be looking at Enscape for Mac. Now, I did a bit of a testing on this when it was in the beta version, but now we're actually going to look at one of the final releases. There have been a few updates since then, and I'm super impressed by the quality of the renderings that I'm now seeing from Enscape on the Mac platform. So if you like what you see, please get in touch, and we retail and sell Enscape ourselves on our real-time rendering website. And we also provide training at all levels as well. So I hope you enjoy the video, everybody, and thanks for watching. Bye bye. Now, as you know, I've been into real time rendering on the Mac for quite some time, and I'm very excited about the new release of Enscape now on the Mac platform. Um, so if you go to the Enscape website, you can see everything you need to know about the Enscape for Mac. Now, at the moment, it's only supported for SketchUp 2021 or 2022 versions. Hopefully, there's some more in the pipeline, um, particularly Vectorworks is the one that I'm looking forward to. But you can see you can get yourself a 14-day trial, and, you know, it just kind of runs through some of the benefits that you're going to find. Now, some of the features are basically available. You can see the new features that are available here. There are a few other features that are still to come. So do be aware that these are not fully featured yet, but they're in the pipeline and they're gonna come soon, so that's good. And finally, if you also go down to the system preferences, uh, you can basically see the operating system requirements. Um, so ideally you want to be on Monterey or higher, um, a good MacBook Pro with a good graphics card, or the M1, uh, which is what I've got, an M1 Pro. Uh, I just wanted to really show you, if you scroll down to the bottom, um, here we go, here's the link to the actual installer. So that's a little bit tricky to find, actually. So um, you can install it for Windows, but of course we're looking at Enscape for Mac here, and there's more information about the version details. Finally, I just want to draw your attention to the sample projects. So if you go up to Sample Projects, you can see there's a really nice range of new sample projects that you can download, both in um, standalone format. Uh, there's some Revit files here as well. Um, but actually, the one that I'm going to choose is the one that's actually specifically for the Mac. So I'm going to demonstrate this uh, sample file. Okay, so with that, let's hop into SketchUp now. So I'm going to pop down to my SketchUp 2022. And you can see this file here, Enscape for Mac sample. It's called Apple Hills. And um, it was converted from 2021 SketchUp to 2022. But it's a really nice little file. And I just want to really show you around this before we then immediately hop into Enscape. So first thing we'll do, let's just click uh, H. Let's just sort of pan around the view. You can see it's a pretty minimal environment. Um, there's not a huge amount in the scene, but it's a very, very nice scene. But what you're going to be impressed with is the quality of the images that I'll be getting in a few seconds. Just wait and see. You'll be blown away. So what we need to do in order to launch Enscape is click on the button here. But just before we do that, just go to Extensions and go to Enscape and basically make sure you've actually uh, added Enscape and install it. So you'll see all the buttons here. So I've right clicked and done Customize and just dragged up all of the Enscape buttons onto my uh, dock here. But you also see them down on the sidebar. Okay, so here we are with our scene open in SketchUp. Um, let's basically with a single click just launch the Enscape browser. So with that single click, it will basically launch Enscape and you can see it starts off by exporting the materials. Um, you've got a little bit of a getting started dialogue here that you can kind of learn the keyboard shortcuts if you're not sure if you're new to Enscape. Um, so definitely pay attention to that. Then we're ready, we can close that one down. Okay, so it'll take a few seconds to load. You can see the uh, loading dock here. And here is my model loaded. And if I go to uh, SketchUp, and I basically, let's just drag that down out of full screen mode. Let me just minimize this. So I'll just kind of dock that onto that half. Okay, so you can see I've got uh, SketchUp on this side of my screen docked on the Mac, and I've got Enscape on this other side. Let's just bring that across. Um, one of the really nice things, though, about Enscape is the way it sits on top of the software. So if I have this button uh, pressed here, Synchronize Views, you'll notice that as soon as I move the view around in the SketchUp window, you can see the preview already updating on the Enscape screen. 
Now you will notice it takes a little while for, to refine the view. Uh, once the rendering sort of stops, it gets better and better. Um, so it's really just a preview, but you'll be absolutely blown away when we do some final rendered images in a moment, I know. So just bear with this in mind. Now at the moment, I'm just in this white card view, which is a really nice view that I can just show you I've set up in the visual settings. Um, and if you do want to, by the way, you can kind of put some like outlines on there as well, just to get a slightly more sort of graphical kind of cartoony type view. Um, again, just sort of wait for that to refine that image and you'll notice that the quality really improves. So these are great little views um, and I would encourage you to experiment with these and render those out. I've got a few examples I'll show you at the end which look absolutely amazing. Okay, let's go ahead and put it into full screen view and you can see that view looking really, really nice, particularly once it's had a chance to refine. Um, it's very clever the way the rendering sort of just basically updates the bit that uh, it needs to rather than the entire image each time. So I can kind of pan around and get a really nice experience. But let's go ahead and click into normal rendering mode we're going to turn these outlines off because that definitely gives a more graphical view. And let's go to uh, just the no none rendering mode, which is basically just your normal sort of textured lighting. Now, as you can see, the rendering is refining quite rapidly. It does take a few seconds to get there. Um, so in the background, it's sort of processing. But before you know it, the image preview you see on screen is not far off the final quality. And believe me, the final quality is way better than this. Just wait and see. Okay, so do bear in mind, as soon as you move around, the bit over here, like for example, that was new, just takes a bit of refinement. But it's remarkable how it doesn't need to re-render everything. Now, one of the really lovely things I love about Enscape is the ability to just play around with the lighting. So to do this, I'm going to click the U key on the keyboard. And if you just look down into this bottom corner, you can see the time of the day swinging through and those shadows sort of coming into the model. And basically, I can completely change the look of this image simply by changing the time of the day and the shadow angle. You can also do it by holding um, shift and the right key down. And that's a really nice way to kind of simulate the sun moving through the space quite slowly. So look at those absolutely gorgeous shadows. That's a really nice sort of render there. Let's just pause on that just for a moment and let it refine. Okay, so I think that's a great image. I'm very happy with that so far. So all I need to do in order to export it is run up to screenshot at the top left. But before we do that, we might want to check our rendering settings. So to do that, we go to the visual settings and we just pop into here and just review a few of the items in here. Now you can see you've got the different rendering qualities here. So depending on the quality of your uh, graphics card and so on, you might want to set that down to high or medium. But I'm going to go for ultra. Um, I'm going to uh, come back to some of these in a moment. Let's go to image. So you've got things like contrast and highlights. So you can kind of really kind of work into the image. Things like shadows. I really like the way you can just sort of lighten and darken them. Let's just reset both of those. And even saturation. So if you want to go into sort of a quite a saturated image or more of a grayscale image or just sort of tone it down a bit, you can very easily. And you've got the degrees Kelvin here. So there's a bunch of other settings in here that we can go through, things like bloom and vignetting, um, you know, all the usual kind of things that you might want to kind of bring in on an image. Let's just get that down. Chromatic aberration as well, another really nice little aspect to rendering, which does actually make quite a big difference. So let's go ahead and just reset all of those to back to the defaults. And basically, I'm going to go on to atmosphere. So this is to do with the outside of the atmosphere, and you can see it just sort of changes uh, the nature of the lighting a little bit, but it's pretty subtle. And then you've got things like sun brightness as well. Obviously, you can make the sun a lot brighter, but I'm just going to reset everything here. And what we're going to do is go to output. So in output, I'm just going to basically set these to 4K, which is my sort of standard definition of rendering. And I'm going to select a new folder here. Let's go ahead, select my folder, and you can see I've already got, let's just make a new folder called New Renders, just so you can see how fast this is. Okay, so we'll click Open. So I've got my resolution set, we've got the naming set and so on. So let's see, come out of that dialog, and let's go ahead and do our first rendering. So we'll click Screenshot. We'll save the render, and let's just call this uh, Living Room 1. Now, it will take a few seconds to capture the screenshot and we get a little progress bar coming. But just wait till you see the preview. Already, the preview looks quite um, amazing in terms of refinement. I've got a feeling I might have put the chroma chromatic aberration on a bit too much, which is giving this sort of blurring effect. But we'll see. We'll see when we get the final rendering. 
Okay, so you can see that I've now rendered out the final image. I did make a few adjustments to the hue and saturation, but what a fantastic quality image. But let's look at how we can actually save this view to come back to in the future. Okay, what I'm gonna do is just pop over my view management, and if I want to, I can save the view. Now, I've already done this, uh, this is living room view. But let me just uh, review some of the other views that I've actually set up. So if I double click on some of those, you can see there's another view, but this was taken at a completely different time. So, you know, just sort of gives you a bit of an idea of how cool that space looks. And again, what's really nice is, if I want to, I can use the U key and the I key to basically scroll through the different times of the day and show off that wonderful lighting. So let's have a look at the lighting. Um, if I just basically scroll through, let's go up a bit here. Let's kind of get into this, just let it respond. And then you can see as I scroll through that lighting, the different times of the day, the rendering changes quite dramatically. Now do be aware, of course, it's not until you let go and let it refine that the image true quality comes together. So there's a great little view. I'm really happy with that one. So I'm just gonna pop that one up and let's just save that view again. Just call this uh, living room three. Okay, so that will be something that I can record. And if I do want to, I can associate some um, presets from the other views as well into there. But let's just go ahead and create. So really, really nice way to create linked views. And you can see I've got a few different views here. Let's just pan back a bit on that one. It's quite a nice one. Um, and again, once again, I love the fact I can just kind of play around with the lighting. So let me just click the U key and the I key just to play through the different times of the day and scroll through perhaps with the mouse. Let's see if we can kind of get the sun coming in. I think we need to go the other way actually. Yeah, there we go. Let's get that sun coming into that room there. Okay, so let's go ahead and render this view. Um, in fact, let's just save this one. So basically I can click create new view and just click create, very easy. And let's render that view out. So we'll go ahead and just save it with the default name and basically watch it capture. Um, it renders very, very rapidly. And that's a great thing. At the moment, you'll notice that if I did pop open my Mac um, screen settings, quite a lot of processing going on with all the different programs I've got. But the most, most important thing is if you pop open the GPU history um, on my other screen there, you'll notice that my GPU is pretty much maxing out. So have a look at the CPU as well. So there's my CPU, are barely being touched. You've got the efficiency cores doing their bit, but you know, even core 10 hardly even being touched. So again, it's all graphics card related. Now I'm working on an M1 Pro. Um, if you were on an M1 Max, I would expect even faster renderings. So what we'll do, we will review these images in a moment together and see what the kind of quality we've got. So let's just pop into our folder. So here you can see some of the final images I've rendered out. And all I've done here is changed nothing but the lighting and the time of day and just re-rendered a few different images with different times of the day. And it's incredible the variety and scope of the lighting and the quality of the images are some of the best I've ever seen. I just want to draw your attention to one other really nice feature of Enscape. Um, and to do this, we're gonna to go to visual settings. We're gonna look at the output. Now, one of the things that you notice that you can actually do is export the object ID, material ID, depth channel, and alpha channels. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and render this image out with all of those channels. And I just wanna show you what all of that is about and the benefit of doing that. And we'll come back and look at that in a second. Okay, so after just a few moments, I've now rendered this amazing image. Um, but what I've also got is both the material ID and the object ID. And you'll notice I've also got the alpha channel. There's the alpha channel there. And finally, I've got the uh, depth mask. So this means that you can import these into Photoshop for post editing, and it makes it super easy to select either materials or textures or objects so that you can do that final tweaking to the tones, the hue, the saturation, things like shadows as well. So really, really good if you like to do some post processing. Well, everybody, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Here's just uh, playing out with a few of the final renderings, a white card rendering, a white card with some edges, more graphical view, and finally the light view. But here's just some of my favorite images I made during the course of this tutorial. And I will think you agree, these renders are absolutely superb. So I definitely recommend if you're a Mac user, you should download a trial of Enscape for Mac download the uh, trial file and have a little play and you will be blown away by the quality of the renderings that you can make. Thanks for watching everybody and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, bye bye.